Good day to you ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Press R. On the program today we are going to focus on climate change and disasters and we're going to ask the question is humanity doomed with what is happening things are turning around and the change is so drastic that there is fear that humanity is doomed how long for how long are we going to wait and see people die when we can prevent that we have brought people who are going to propose what exactly uh, what has to be done but before they do that ladies and gentlemen we're going to ask them what exactly is happening that uh, things are going so drastically difficult for humanity within a very short time climate change and we are going to bring that down to the Cameroonian context we have had floods in Boya of late with deaths we just had floods in uh, Yagua in the far north we had them in Bermuda we've been having them and landslides around the country and people are dying what is happening our scientists our environmentalists our volcanologists are all these people sleeping to the detriment of Cameroonians and humanity you just stay where you are those are the type of things that we're going to discuss on press out today and to talk about this issue which is hot we have invited professor Isaac Njila who is a volcanologist and a disaster management expert we are pleased it's really an honor to have you on press out today prof thank you very much Kilian it's my pleasure to be on press uh, after a very long time and to talk on this uh, issue which is very challenging and uh, which is taking away the lives of a lot of people destruction of property and all or not i'm happy to be around thank you thank you for coming prof uh, when i see you i remember legnos at the time it happened i saw you on every picture on every explanation <laughs> exactly <laughs> yes, uh, we're going to maybe just cite that as an example yeah. uh, because that's a, a human disaster, one of them that we have had, yeah. one of the worst in the country, in the country and Africa. we have had several others and it looks like we are not taking enough measures to make sure that sort of things don't happen. Well, you are going to tell us whether we have done that or we haven't done that. I'm going to move to the extreme left of this set to welcome Dr. Augustine B. Njamshi, who is the chairperson of the Technical and Political Affairs of Pan-African Climate Justice Alliance. That alone tells you that he has so in roots into this topic and he's going to help us understand what is happening and obviously propose what should be done so that people don't die because of things we can prevent. Doctor, welcome to Presa. Thank you for having me again here, Killian. It is very important and urgent that we continue discussing such topics for sensitization and for raising awareness. I, I think that is very important, so I'm happy to be here. That's why you are here. Thank you for coming, Doctor. And just uh, between you and I, um, a great lady here. Aisha Mama, environmental journalist, CRTV journalist, um, is sandwiched by you and I, and she is going to share her experiences with us. Um, journalists also sleeping. We are supposed to communicate and make sure that uh, people know the dangers, the dangers, the negative impact of climate change. You are welcome to press our. Uh, Aisha Mama. Thank you, Kilian. Thank you for inviting me. It's really a pleasure. And this is another opportunity for me to use uh, my profession or my talent or anything I have to shout at the top of my voice to keep telling people that uh, we are in danger. The world is actually in danger. Climate change is real. We have to do something. Each and everyone has an assignment wherever you are to make the world a better place. So. As an environmental journalist, as you said, uh, it's a commitment that I want to, I'm so conscious about my environment and I'll share any information I have with anybody to make things work. Things are working gradually. Let us even say that it's a snail pace because things we can prevent, people are still dying because of some of those things. Are you saying that voice of yours, you have not raised the volume so much? <laughs> it's true, I'm not alone. We are so many of us trying to make our voices heard. But 
I'll tell you something. Just go to the newsrooms and you will discover that uh, talking about the environment or the climate can never be a prime story. Mm -hmm. uh, they always put it at the end of uh, the news menu and the, the people who are involved who, who have volunteered about uh, talking about the environment have all the difficulties on earth because there's nobody who is really ready to sponsor or to finance a reporter or to assist you apart from your own small means that you have at your, at your disposal. Okay. So it is a really serious topic that we have to even consider it sometimes in modern politics. Okay, thank you very much. We're not going to make it a debate before the debate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, we, but we know that we have had so many uh, disasters with having catastrophes and uh, journalists should actually take it on themselves. We should take it on ourselves to make sure that we communicate uh, enough for this to stop killing humanity, what we can prevent. And our own Elias Ngalami, who is also an environmental journalist, is the publisher of uh, Echo Outlook. Elias, you're welcome to Press Out. Thank you, Kilian. Thank you for inviting me to the set once more. Yes, and uh, this is Press Out. Uh, we begin always with the press review. We want to know what the papers talked about during the week. Yoti. Kalele Songe read the, the newspapers and put together the review for us. Let's watch together. Senators of the third legislature were yet again in the spotlight this week. Several newspapers showcased some of their ambitions after the senators received attributes. On the horizon, Senator Mfon Muketa the fourth Ekoko pledges to serve the Cameroonian people while Senator Neba Bridget reveals to the Guardian Post that her mandate is dedicated to empowering women and girls. The same paper has Senator for Tabetandu disclosing his development plans for the Southwest region. In another edition of the paper, Dr. Nick Nguanyam is convinced that Professor Senator Boyomo Asala will change the face of the Senate. The Sun has faces of all 100 senators for readers who would like to know who they are. To the Guardian Post, New old faces dominate the Senate. Inspiring a political succession article on Newswatch, the newspaper piques the reader's curiosity, wondering why not Frank Bia someday if Mukete and Julia have replaced their parents at the Senate. There's more to think about when Cameroon Tribune ponders on videos of molested victims being a growing phenomenon. The same press organ takes an interest in the increasing floods that claim lives and property can better manage catastrophes. The reconstruction plan for the northwest and southwest regions was also highlighted this week. The Herald Tribune informs readers of the new dynamics adopted to boost the reconstruction plan. A plan Newswatch indicates is youth-centered. The Dawn goes further to explain that it is a bottom-to-top approach. While the reconstruction plan seems well on course, the Horizon reports that DDR inmates have killed Field Marshal, indicating Nasori Clovis was his name. Meanwhile, bishops at the 48th plenary of the National Episcopal Conference are appealing with Cameroonians to stop killing one another, as recounted on Cameroon Tribune. Meantime, the Guardian Post claims that the governor of the Northwest region is accusing funds of fortifying Ambazonia fighters by steadily performing traditional rights on them. The Post newspaper is more concerned about an imminent fall scarcity in Boya, where the government has cracked down roadside vendors. This week as well, the print media informed readers on the launch of an anti-corruption clinic operation to fight against corruption in the country. Newswatch is keen on the Supreme State Audit Office, accentuating that it hasn't been a bed of roses for Rose Baacha Famundan, who keeps ensuring that public funds are managed with property. There were equally articles on the reformed single treasury account that goes operational come June this year. These and more kept newspaper readers abreast of the week's happenings. Thank you very much, Yoti Kale Lesonge. The appointment is taken for next week, and we're going to read through with you to see what the newspapers would have uh, said between today and that next week, God willing. We cannot go to climate change without going to something which is a disaster. We are talking about disaster. It is a, a cholera, cholera outbreak 
in Yaounde, uh, so many cases and um, declared already with deaths announced, um, it is becoming really uh, preoccupying. Doctor Jamshi, we begin with you. I think um, this is a very sad situation. Cholera has been happening in the country in the different regions, not at a particular time, or that is the whole country is never affected exactly, but wherever it strikes, it is very, very dangerous. And we think um, it is very obvious that we need to take more care of this climate change because cholera could also be linked somehow to climate change. I'm not talking of, of the case of Yaoni in particular or the central region in particular. But in those places where cholera has uh, happened in the past, you see the link between scarcity of water and cholera. When once there are droughts, when once man and beast are fighting for the same water points, what do you get? You get dirty water that is infested and can only aggravate cholera at any time. Thank you very much. And we're going to be talking uh, climate change and some of the things that are happening are floods. Uh, when we have floods, uh, Professor uh, Isaac Njila, it gets into toilets, sweeps the toilets into the living areas. Yeah, man is all the time, you know, at risk of, uh, most of the time, at risk of uh, cholera because, as uh, uh, Dr. Njamshi said, when there's excess water, there is cholera. When there's limited water, there is cholera. And so when you look at uh, the city of Yaoundé and see the way it is built without any plants and so on, when you look at the city and see the way people are suffering because they have no water or sometimes when they have excess water, you should know that well, you, these are elements that will bring in cholera. We have had uh, the communications over the radio, over the TV. The question is, are the communications going through? Are we communicating en enough? If we are communicating enough, have we reduced the risk? People think that, that norms that people have to take, like boiling water before drinking, people are eating salad everywhere, those of us, those of us who eat in a, a backside uh, restaurants and so on, you don't know the source of the vegetable, you don't know whether the vegetable has been washed and so on, you come there to show that you are somebody who is big enough, you are asking for salad to eat before you take any other sort of, any other food. So we should be careful. We need to be very, yes. very careful so that yeah. it doesn't spread even further. Yes, uh, Elias, our environment, you are an environmental journalist, you are an environment journalist, please. Yes. Our environment is no longer safe for us, so we have to be doubly careful. Yes, Kilian, you know, we have raised this issue of refuse management in Yaoundé. It is alarming, and we, we have been we are cautioning the public on the dangers of this uh, refuse abandon by whoever is supposed to, 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 to be in charge. So the, 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 the aggravated situation of cholera in Yaoundé is not, surpri in is not surprising. It's a direct result because with rains now, these things are all drained and poured into the water system. And a good number of people in Yaoundé are using boreholes. So you can imagine the dangers, the, the risks the, the, the families and communities are, 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 are bearing. Yes, um, Aisha Mama, um, we don't lack water. Prof. Njila just said that we have water flowing in Yaoundé, even if some people don't have water flowing uh, from on their taps. We have water all around. We have Fundi, we have Sanaga around, we have even some other uh, streams. We have water. We have water in Yaoundé. If we don't have potable water uh, enough, it is a different thing. For water we have. So water can also wash, as you call it, you are in environmental people, wash can also be a danger instead of. Uh, when we talk of water, the question is coming into my mind. What quality of water are you talking of? Because uh, uh, open your tap, when we were in the primary school, it was said that water has no color, no taste. Uh, but now you discover that you open your tap sometimes, you have brown water, sometimes it's white. 
and you don't really know what is happening and there's nobody there to explain so those are all the happenings around that can lead to an outbreak like the one that we are having now the one of cholera and water scarcity is also attributed as doctor said to climate change there is global warming some of our activities are endangering the world the temperature keeps rising okay and since you are already there <laughs> that's where we are going to we should just go into that uh, main focus of uh, our debate today the topic again if you are just joining us ladies and gentlemen on press R is climate change and disasters is humanity doomed are we going for to the 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 unity the unity uh, by the uh, what is happening around us um i go to Dr. Augustine B. Jamshi, who is the Chair of the Technical and uh, Political Affairs in the Pan-African Climate Justice Alliance. Um, when we say climate, in one minute, climate change, how do we measure what we understand by climate change? What is climate change and how do we measure the change? Well, uh, well yeah. Maybe we will want to ask that question to Dr. Uh, Professor Angela, <laughs> <laughs> who is the scientist. But, but from a, from an environmental uh, environmentalist point of view, we think climate change is that um, that change that occurs way beyond the natural change that should have been in the environment if the global, uh, I mean, if the Earth, Mother Earth, was left alone to deal with some kind of excesses uh, that are naturally produced but because of the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere since the industrial revolution in 1830 the temperature the global temperature has now risen way beyond what we had by 1.1 degrees celsius and under this scenario we're having all this conf uh, you <coughs> know this uh, this where extreme weather events like floods, droughts, cyclones, and all those things. So, um, this climate change we are talking about is not what should have naturally occurred okay. if the environment was left alone without the in wanton destruction destruction by man. Mm -hmm. That is what we are talking about. So, uh, uh, Prof, uh, I am told that you are the one to answer that question <laughs> scientifically. <laughs> yes. 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 Let me just answer it in a, in a more pragmatic way. And, uh, I consider the planet Earth to have to have a fever. When you have a fever, temperatures rise within you. You start sweating, pouring out water, and so on. That is exactly what is happening with the planet Earth. You see, the, because of global warming, temperatures are rising. The ice is melting at the North Pole and the South Pole, and there's excess water now pouring into, uh, into the oceans. Because of that, it changes a lot of weather conditions. You have storms, storms that are growing, I mean, are growing bigger and bigger. You have drought that are, you know, chopping into, uh, you know, the savanna and into the forest and so on. You have lots of things. And then because the water is entering into the oceans, you have sea rise, sea level rise. If you go like to uh, Kribi, those of us who have always been going there, you can measure the degree of movement of the sea towards the land, how it's chopping the land. For the past 10 years, it has chopped more than 10 meters. And I can assure you that the, the problem of water chopping into land is very serious at our Atlantic uh, coast. If you go to that uh, Kribi, as I'm, I'm saying, you see that even around the uh, Lise, Lise Bilin, within the next two years, the road will be cut off. All the restaurants that, yes, mm -hmm. all the restaurants that used to be on the right part of the road as you are driving to Kribi, to Kribi they, are, they have all been destroyed. You go to Limbe, you know it's chopping as if the world is coming to an end. As you leave and you are going to Idi now, you can see just half houses in, inside the sea. The sea is really chopping into our territory. Yes, uh, Prof, this question, it has been answered to me. But I don't think that everyone watching us, it's paradoxical. It, it, it sounds a commonplace question, but it's very tricky. Global warming is, as you say, there is heat that is hitting the ice they are along the poles and uh, it's coming down. What we, through common sense, understand is that 
when there is a lot of heat, we have drought, that's dryness. Yeah. How do you explain that there is heat and we either have floods, no yeah. much water? Yes, temperatures are rising in the tropics, they're also rising in the tropical areas. What is happening is that when this, this temperature are high, the water evaporates, the amount of water that you have in the atmosphere is more than what you're supposed to have normally. Mm -hmm. That is what causes the cloud and that is what uh, gives rise to heavy rains and storms in uh, different areas. And then when you have these heavy rains in one part of the world, you have drought in the other one. So it is some sort of checks and balance that you have. Okay. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> excess water in the atmosphere is caused as a result of this global warming. The earth really has a fever. Uh, before we go into some specific questions, uh, we're going to contextualize when we talk about general climate um, things. Elias, we've been moving uh, around with the international organizations. We've gone for, for, from COP27 to COP21, COP15, and all of that to try to mitigate the global warming and the uh, uh, accession of gas of, 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 of coal of charcoal onto the onto the environment what can you say that is the problem that these big people go and talk about it but we see very little happening yes Kilian. maybe i should just share a, a, a vivid a, explanation on from 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 another scientist on on, on on the climate change issue you know in primary school we're taught that when the sun rays hits the the the, the atmos the the earth surface there's a natural process by which that heat is sent back to the atmosphere so that the the the, the earth has a a a, 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 a stabilized a temperature but because of pollution because of gases emanating from human activity it is blocking that temperature from the going evaporating and going uh, up back into the into the, in the natural process following the natural process so it generates more heat and that is the global warming mm -hmm. effect and because of that change so many other natural things are changing naturally so the, both the floods, the droughts, and all that is as a result emanating from that change. So that was the, t the explanation I said that you just share on the, on the climate change uh, uh, issue. Yes, now your experience. It, yes, the experience is that man is the problem. Man is just steadfast. Change is difficult to come by. People are more interested in their economy People are more interested in their well, their their day-to-day uh, uh, -day living and well-being, and they don't hit to call for uh, 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 elevating the the, the, the the climate. Uh, uh, they actually issues. call. They talk about it every day. That's why you have those conferences: COP 21, COP 27, COP 15, and rest. They actually call, but action is the problem. I think so. Yes, those conferences are there to discuss pertinent issues to see how. The the the, the 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 temperatures uh, 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 can be lessened to see how the, the the gas that pollutes the atmosphere can be reduced, especially by the industrial countries, because they, they are the ones polluting the atmosphere. We of the west of the of the de developing countries, we have our forest, natural forest. They have virtually cleared everything in their in their So it they are using us, they are using us as their blanket, because all those gases. Our natural forest is able to contain, is able to absorb those gases, and by the, in that in that in that way, it is stabilizing the the the, 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 the climate in, in a, to an extent. So the the, 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 the uh, my, my my boss there will tell you more better because mm -hmm. they are the main actors in those. In yes, the, uh, he, will, he will of course tell us, uh, Aisha, <laughs> your experience in going around with some of these um, international organizations on uh, mitigating the effects of uh, climate change on us. What actually is happening from mm. your own observation? Yes, uh, sometimes in developed con under developed countries like Cameroon, we see we are for adaptation. Climate change is real, climate change is here. We just have to look for those measures that we are going to use to live alongside climate change. Uh, and when we talk about human activities, we are the problem. We are actually the problem because of our way of life. 
you can imagine you, let me just take a simple example you go to a, a home where you have about four cars uh, the head of the family has one car the, 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 the mother of the family has one car the children they, they, they have one for their school and it might be there's another car, one only for the weekend you know how much gas these vehicles are emitting it is you cannot really imagine so uh, what you, you can do is if and if you go there and tell uh, this uh, uh, the, the, the head of the family that please cut down your way of life he will feel that you are not happy because he is living very luxurious life and uh, it is going to even create a problem so human activities are the major cause and as you said those are uh, the the, 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 the the giant developed countries they are the major polluters of the world we are the victims that's why in some of the international organizations they, they want to hold them accountable that you have to pay pay for what you do you, you create a problem and you, you need to bring the solution there are victims somewhere uh, in in africa as as you say we have in cameroon we have the, the, the our forest uh, the, the, the central african uh, forest which is a very big carbon sink is helping to absorb some of the, the carbon that is being emitted into we could have been living a very quiet life in africa in cameroon but as they always say climate change is a global problem so it leaves from one place to another and when you look at some of the causes uh, you know, poor urbanization poor waste management especially here in, in cameroon uh, waste, when you talk about waste management is something that's going through my mind plastic waste you, you dump it you just drink water and you just send it out there in the open you don't know the consequence more of the flood i have here only if you look very carefully some of the gutters and are blocked, what, are blocked by some of, by these some of this 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 yes, plastic, plastic uh, bottles in back yes uh, uh, prof uh, dr and jamshi she talked to use a very uh, common example of a household with four cars uh, it's a problem but the bigger problem is at the industrial level yeah. What are some of you who are looking at that level, at that higher level doing? Because what an industry can do in terms of pollution, uh, all these cars put together, 200, may not do that in one year. Mm. So what actually are those uh, policymakers saying about the industrial pollution? Thank you very much, Killian. I, I, I think I, I, want to, I would like to you know, describe the scene with a very simple analogy you see the earth naturally can deal with the carbon emission that is coming out from natural sources or even human sources that are very moderated the earth can deal with it right it can clean mother earth can clean her backside mm -hmm. but because of the one ton destruction and the quest for profit and comfort that mankind has lived since the industrial revolution that used dirty energy sources like coal like oil you know to develop they have pumped more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere than mother earth can deal with naturally it's like opening a tap it, uh, into an evacuation system that is smaller than the water that is coming, the waste that is coming from that tap, right? Simply said, who has done this? It is very clear that what we are suffering from today came from the time of, of the Industrial Revolution in 1830. That the gases that were pumped into the atmosphere and continue to be pumped into the atmosphere are too much for mother earth to deal with and this is coming from 20 percent of the global population that is found in the global north global north we are talking about you developed countries Europe, Europe, america, america and all yes, yes, the rest yes, yes. yes so that is why in the climate <coughs> negotiation in the convention itself and the Paris Agreement, there is a certain principle called the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities. It means, it means mankind as a whole is responsible, but some are more responsible than others. 
Okay? Yeah. Common but differentiated. Differentiated in the sense that those of us in the developing countries are not as responsible as those in the developed countries. Mm. That's a cardinal principle. Mm. Just give me a minute. So, this is, this is what it looks like. There is a, somebody has a birthday party. He invites 10 people. The cake is cut into 10 pieces equitably mm. for everybody, every participant to have a share. Mm -hmm. pieces of cake and then when the eight other invit invitees come there are only two pieces of left. cake left yes. and then those two participants say let's forget about what we ate let's share the two pieces again e equitably uh, even with those who uh, ate the eight, the eight. Uh, that, that is example. what is happening what an example. in negotiations okay developed countries who have emitted 80% of the gases into the atmosphere and we only have a very little atmospheric space left to emit again. Say that let's forget about what they, they yeah, do in the gas yeah. and we are suffering from it yeah. and let's look at how we can manage share the 20% yeah. space, limited 20% space that is left that equitably. Sounds, that sounds That's so unjust. <laughs> that right? Thank you for the explanation. It's, it is so clean mm -hmm. and very clear. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we are going to go into examples. We said we will settle in Cameroon, but before we go there, we're going to take a, a, a one round at the, at the table. Prof, beginning with you, are uh, we doomed with this type of explanation that uh, Dr. Njamsi has given? I am really we, happy. as humanity, I are we doomed? I feel proud with the explanation and the analogy he has given. And I think that we cannot share the two pieces of cake <laughs> equally. There is another scenario which comes up still with them that we should do carbon trade. Let them pay for our share of the carbon that we are not producing mm -hmm. and keep on producing. Mm -hmm. If we do that, it might be better. I doubt how, how much Cameroon has sold carbon since you started with that slogan. Mm. And I want to think also that in order to minimize all of this, we must reduce carbon emission. How can we reduce it? By planting more trees mm. in our carbon sinks like the Amazon Basin and the Congo Basin. If we are 25,000 of us and 25 million of us in the country, if each of us plants just a tree per year, and each child born plants a tree, how many trees are you going to have in 10 years? You can calculate that for yourself. Yes. Then yeah. you can also take this carbon or from the industry, because most of the carbon is coming from the industries. There is a small, simple scientific process that has been experimental and is working, where you put a chimney on top of the chimney of the industry, you start tapping the carbon that is coming out, and then you carry it and go and put them deep. In the, 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 you know, you, you, you pump it into a deep sea 10 kilometers down, it will remain there forever because carbon dioxide, water has an insatiable appetite for the you know, carbon dioxide. Okay. And that's exactly what happened in Legnos before the over 10. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, Elias, are we doomed? Yes, I think we are doomed if we don't take the necessary precaution. We are doomed if we don't follow the right steps. Environmentalists are crying day and night, telling us what we have to do, what the community have to do, what the population have to do. As a child, I grew up in, 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 in my fall in Limbia and I, frequent, I, fre uh, I, I frequented uh, Boya. You saw, before the coming of the University of Boya, there was a particular train of house building. There was enough space, the forest was green. But today, go to Boya, they have encroached right up to the, 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 the Mount Cameroon. Uh, yes, we, we are going to, that's, those are the examples, we are coming to settle on that. Okay. I think to okay. come into our examples, yes. <laughs> uh, Aisha, we don't as humanity. Humanity is doomed if we don't adopt a sustainable way of living. And uh, in our agriculture, we should adapt sustainability. That is, do agriculture that is 
good for the environment. Well, our farmers should stop using really harsh and wild uh, insecticides and pesticides and come back to natural manure. We are doomed for failure. In, we, the humanity is doomed if we keep the lifestyle that we have now. Okay. Luxury, we want to live very comfortable, not knowing what is going around, and then felling trees as much as it is not expected. As Prof is saying, we should plant. While planting, we should do everything possible not to cut the, not to cut the trees that are already available. And those who are using it for firewood, we should try to introduce them to some ecological ways of cooking so that they should reduce the, the use of firewood. I saw some youths in, in, in Yaoundé, some in Fu, who go around and then they gather house refuge and they, they do ecological charcoal. Mm. You see that one, when you use that, it replaces this other charcoal where you cut too it's too much trees, trees yes yes to to to, to fabricate it yes. so if we yes. have a sustainable way of living i'm sure we can uh move away from doom mm -hmm. uh, i see that yes uh prof you know you are the one who enlightened this type of uh, image for us to to say <laughs> now 10 people eight have eaten eight pieces of cake <laughs> Only two are left, <laughs> and instead of giving to the two who are left, no, to, to, to the, yes, who are left, all the ten, yes, all <laughs> the ten have to share, and I think all the ten have to share because no one will be left to die, unfortunately. <laughs> now, are we doomed because the two left, all the ten must share? Are we doomed? <laughs> we are doomed. Hmm. I would have had to answer that question even before we started this conversation. We are doomed. It's not coming from us. Mm -hmm. It's not coming from mm -hmm. Elias. It's coming from IPCC. Which is? That is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is the scientific body okay. of the UNFCCC. That is the convention. The Safe Assessment Report, which was published a few weeks ago, doesn't spare good news for us. It says, um, under the 1.1 scenario, we are already having these disasters and that they will continue to increase. If we get one, and nice. those who will be most affected are the vulnerable people. Mm -hmm. And who are they? They are the elderly, the people in the developing countries, the young people, women, women and young people, right? And that this effect is very disproportionate and that is true when you come to a community where there is floods or drought women suffer the most with their children okay mm -hmm. africa in particular for instance lost between uh, 40 billion dollars in terms of climate change between 2010 and 2019. This will rise to 50 uh, billion dollars by 2040 if nothing changes. In fact, we have lost about 2 to 4 percent of our GDP to climate change. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yes. So this gives us a scenario that at the end of the day, we are only the only temperature rise that we have now is 1.1 degrees. It will go to 1.5 degrees, not to talk of the two so degrees that is in the Paris Agreement. We are doomed. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Augustine Jamshi. Just the last thing, and it's going to come from you. Don't give the name or names of some of these uh, cities, as I have heard, that in 50 years from now, we are told that there are some cities where human life will not be sustainable. That's as a human being, you will not live. Is that correct, you and the uh, professor? Not only you want to start. Okay. I think. Uh, Is that true? I never answer yes or no. Okay. But I give examples. Yes. <laughs> if Limbe, whether Kribi is about to disappear in the next uh, few years because we cannot go there, we cannot come back. Uh, the Limbe is doing the same, and uh, uh, Dwala the same. Bamusu is, uh, you know, almost being submerged with what, with a uh, mud flat and with still see incursion. The 
town of Bamuso, if you go there now, it's almost being submerged. You can count those ones. You don't need to go out of the country. <laughs> count those ones. Well, uh, let, let me ask this. As um, the, 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 the effects are getting so uh, nefarious, I think that human structure will be adapting to. Is it not possible? <laughs> yeah, talking about adaptation, I think that is a very important question. Uh, my sister Aisha talked about adaptation, mm. and you've come to it. That is very important. You know, there are two things we are just talking about here. We are talking about loss and damage, and then adaptation. Mm -hmm. Adaptation, for climate action, there are two things. You either do mitigation and or adaptation. Mm -hmm. Mitigation is the action that you take to, to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions. That is to reduce the pumping of the gases into the atmosphere, yeah. like carbon dioxide, methane, and the rest. Right? You have to stop it. Okay. Stop the problem. Mm -hmm. Stop creating the problem further. Uh, yes. Uh, but adaptation. When you just say yes. this, some people don't understand. Uh, what are the sources of these gases? Because when you say methane, we people who are watching us may not know the sources of these gases. Carbon dioxide, for instance, comes from the from for, from fossil energy. When you burn charcoal, when mm -hmm. you burn coal, when mm -hmm. you burn diesel, when mm -hmm. you burn. Uh, all these fossil fuels, yes. you, you emit carbon dioxide. Yes. Methane comes from other actions like, uh, uh, I think, uh, yes. Professor Angela will again help yes. us on that. Decomposition. Com decomposition. Of, of like from material, like the manure. Yeah. Yes. Like animal production, waste, and decomposition. Okay? They're also very efficient and um, very yeah. dangerous. Mm -hmm. So, what I was trying to say is this. Adaptation is the measures you take to cope with what has already happened. Okay. Okay? So for developing countries, Africa in particular, and Cameroon, adaptation is a must. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you can't do anything about that. You must adapt. You must adapt. Yeah. When it happens, you must adapt. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you are forced to adapt, right? So what we're talking about internationally is that these countries that have the history and continue to pump these gases into the atmosphere. So focus on mitigation because they are the ones to stop it. Okay. If you look at all the greenhouse gas emissions from African continent, it's very this population, it is way below 44% of the global emissions. It means whatever effort we are making in mitigation, we are this uh, it is uh, uh, rendered useless by what is coming from not elsewhere. totally useless yes. but it will be insignificant okay meanwhile we have to deal with the adaptation okay the loss and damage yes now um as we, we, yes a second you know what adaptation has on the global agenda tell us adaptation has become the orphan on these negotiations climate finance when you go to those conferences, what do some of you go and do when uh, you say it's an orphan? You should go and cry aloud there. That is what we are doing. And that's why I have this information to share with you. Okay. Okay. And we have seen that adaptation has not been given the opportunity, the privilege, uh, the eminence that it should have. Okay. Although the uh, Paris Agreement says that adaptation and mitigation should be, you know, at the same level. Mm -hmm. When you look at climate finance that has happened, it's taking place globally from 2019 to 2020, it was $632 billion, out of which only $46 billion was dedicated for adaptation. $15 billion was for dual use. And adaptation and is a better option. Is we are forced to do that, yes. whether we like it okay, or not. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we are going to bring it down, as we promised our viewers. We are going to take uh, examples from Cameroon, because we are in Cameroon. We are going to start with you, the scientist, Professor uh, Isaac uh, Gila. Let us take the recent case which we cited, the Boya um, floods. We have known the uh, Cameroon, uh, the eruption of Mount Cameroon, which is Boya, we, ha we are having uh, runoffs heavering from the mountain that's washing down houses and um, resulting in deaths. 
Prof, tell us first about the internal and external geodynamics of this. Okay. Um, by geodynamics itself, I think you mean uh, the movements that take place either inside the Earth or outside the Earth that can be, that we see visibly expressed by our morphology, the movement of our rivers, and so on. Some of these movements are internal, inside the planet Earth, and when they operate, they can operate in four, two, three different ways. Some can be pulling uh, uh, material apart, some are compressing, some are, you know, moving material parallelly. And when those things happen, they produce two main things, volcanic eruptions we will talk about, and earthquakes. I know that Cameroon, according to the world standard, is, is, is not a country considered to be seismic. Mm. Although we had uh, an earthquake in 1906 of uh, six on the Richter scale along the Lolod of uh, uh, Falls. We have not had that again. Nobody died because the houses that were built in those days were uh, plank houses or, or plank house carabout. Yes, we are going to yes. come to, to, to that when yes. we get further with mm -hmm. this. What should be the solution? Now, tell us, explain. Uh, further, the, 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 eruptions. the eruptions and then the floods that we have these okay. days. Within the last century, we had seven eruptions on Mount Cameroon. And none of these eruptions killed anybody as far as uh, literature shows. It has, you know, the eruptions have been taking place far away from our cities, from Limbe, uh, Tiku, Boya, Muya, and so on. There is no good reason why uh, that the mayor of Boya can give us why Boya has been spared, or the mayors of these towns uh, can tell us why these towns have, uh, have been spared. No, they, 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 they say that they are God. A person who is, yes. is watching it's over them over and them. sending the lava, <laughs> lava in yeah, uh, into to the forest in and to on uh, different uh, directions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Me, I am not going to that because okay. I am a scientist. Yes, go ahead. There is just <laughs> no reason why Boya has not been touched. And there's no reason why in the next eruption that is coming very soon, we will not be touched. I think it will not be touched there because it has not been touched. Uh, continue. <laughs> you are disturbing my point of view. <laughs> so, there's no reason why we have not been touched. The next eruption is coming very soon. Okay. But we don't have uh, equipment of the mountain to monitor it. To show us that it might happen next year or this day and this day. If it happens now, it will just come abruptly because we have only one seismometer of the mountain or in somebody's house, if I may say, mm. walking. It can, and that, that one cannot really detect the eruption that is coming forth. Secondly, uh, if it, it comes now, because in 1999 and 2000, we advised, see the scientists advised the government, Dwaya is, Dwaya is linked to the rest of the world by a small road from the governor's office right to Mutengeni, build a double carriageway mm. that will take uh, in case of uh, any disaster, we can evacuate people, ev ev evacuate people. Build a road from Boya to Munya, build another one from uh, Boya to Maifo Limbe. All these roads were built, and we had a double carriageway from governor's office right down to my 17. After the Senkan, to call it Senkan Tikwa, I saw that the double carriageway was converted again into a single carriageway or a single road. I cried in Mankon. I doubt whether they heard me. How can you have a scientific uh, knowledge that has been given to the, to the government, to the, the council and so on? You, 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 you effect it. And then at the end of the day, you scrape it off. Prof, how can you be in Boya? Instead of crying in, uh, in Bakwede, you are crying in Mankon. It was too them? much. Okay. I'm not even from Mankon. It just, it just okay. it was just, spontaneous. Just, just go ahead. Disaster, that, you can cry in any language. Okay. So, <laughs> so, it is very, very deplorable. We advise the government, the, the council in Boya, that please, you cannot be, because 361 houses were cracked or, or, or were broken during the, or some of them were broken during the disaster, the, the eruption of 19... Uh, 99. Yes. Say the house in Boya, please build houses the, the, like the, what the Germans were building. And if you don't have money to use things, use uh, planks. Don't build any story building to more than two stories. When we left, billionaires came and started and said, scientists, what are you talking about? We are poor. You stay you there and keep us. And they are going up to six stories in Boya. I want to assure you that if we have an earthquake of four on the Richter scale, all those houses will go down. Mm. Yeah, because they are not built following the seismic norms, mm -hmm. all the houses will go down. 
Buyat, the Dwala, or why not? Who we'll, we'll suffer the effects of that? Yes, uh, you say uh, very soon. Do you have evidence of the charging of uh, yeah. an eruption? Uh, you know, in the last century, it erupted in 1909, 1924, 1954, 1959, 1982, 99, and 2000. We are now 2020. 23. And 23. It has not occurred. Any literature will think that, you know, the periodicity is already around. We don't need uh, God or Ephesus to tell us that we are going to have an eruption. I assure you that it is going to come very, very soon. And when it comes, I want to ask the mayor of uh, Boya, how are you going to evacuate the people? How will you evacuate the, I mean, the thousands and thousands, by then in 1930, the population was not there, as my brother was saying here. Well, but yeah. Now the population has multiplied 10 to 20 times. How will you evacuate? Just give me a minute. Have you been to Boya and seen the traffic along the road because they have removed the, 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 the road divide? The well, um, after the, the event, the unfortunate uh, floods, uh, about uh, two weeks or so, so uh, the mayor of Boya, um, came out and sent away broke houses of people who did not respect uh, the building norms. Mm -hmm. And um, when he was asked by CRTV Southwest, he gave the example that he started breaking the house of his relative, very close uh, blood relative. Mm -hmm. So uh, we mean that he says that he means business, that he is going to do that. Yes, uh, Elias, you've listened to what's happening. We are using Boya. We are using Bamenda. Mm -hmm. We are using the West. You still know the Mbache mm -hmm. uh, event. Mm -hmm. uh, you know about Bamenda just about uh, not long ago. Mm -hmm. we, we know about Yagwa mm -hmm. in the far north. We know so many other places in the far north where um, without predicting doom, every, every year we have people running away and they come back to that place. So um, in terms of solution, because we have just nine minutes left to go, what should be done and who should do what? for us not to be in a kind of vicious cycle yes i think everybody should be involved everybody is a, it's a collective effort it's a collective engagement to fight against uh, uh, cli uh, climate change if you see the way the communities the state different stakeholders got involved in the fight against um, uh, covid 19 Mm. I begin to wonder why this same uh, uh, why this same engagement cannot be put when it comes to fighting against climate change. We are talking about sustainable management of of, of, of forests. If you fail one tree, plant two. Yes, let, let's let's yes, take it down. Boya. Yes, let, let's come, let, let's, yes. Come, let, let's, let's go down to, to our example. Yes. Boya, let's come back to Boya. Boya, far north. I think the yes, so, think southwest, the far north, littoral, north, in short, west. Almost the whole country is involved. Yes, I think. I and think landslides. Yes, I think the the, the, the the mayor has to be proactive. We don't just have to wait. Mm -hmm. When it happens, then we begin to come with so, uh, uh, cosmetic solutions. The land grabbings, the uh, amount of land grabbing in in Boya should stop. Professor Joe Tinjuma cried loud. The amount of sale of land which also means destruction of the forest in boya has, be, has become so alarming yeah but prof, well, prof said uh, they should respect building norms not more of land grabbing if they grab land and they what, respect what we are talking about land grabbing because they are encourage, encroaching more and more into the forest okay and the more they empty empty the 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 the, the, the forest the more the disasters will become alarming Yes, yeah, we are looking for solutions, yeah. uh, practical solutions. Is each it? year, each year, we saw how the Minister of uh, Territorial Administration went to Boya. Uh, he went to Yagwa in the far north, and they were all victims of floods. He gave uh, material uh, promptly, material like uh, mattresses, things that people need immediately. That happens. How do we avoid going to give? How do we avoid going to give and avoid it happening? That's the problem. Uh, only coming to when it has happened. People are building and reclaiming land, building in swamps, building in hilly areas, and nobody is saying anything. Some of these people are settled there for so many years. And I think one of the greatest problems we have is 
information sharing. As we were talking, that we're saying that women are one of the, the, the biggest uh, uh, victims of uh, uh, climate changes because they are in the agricultural sector, they, especially those in the rural area, they produce food and with uh, drought and yes, floods. That is right, and we have more than 70% who are involved in that. And if they can't produce food, you see, we are going to have uh, uh, starvation in town. That's why sometimes we have very high prices of food stuff because it's rare. The, 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 the farm produce is not really coming out as it used to be. That is the effect of climate change. So if we make information to get to people who are who need it, to know that you don't have to come build your house in a particular place where you will run the risk of losing your family, entire family in one night, make people understand that this is the, what you should do to get good agriculture that is, you are, at the same time you are producing good food that is natural, food that is uh, uh, good for the health of, of humanity. So I think we should intensify the sharing of the information. More journalists, more reporters should get involved in environmental issues. I know it's sometimes very difficult. And more editors-in-chief should give room for programs on the environment and even productions on the environment. Thank you very much. Uh, the point we're making is very important that people should not go beyond where they can lose their families in one night. In one night. Uh, but, uh, doctor, that is easier, easily said than done. There is somebody somewhere who should stop someone from building or from risking their family. What do you say about that? This is something that we have to, the examples that have been given, only points to the fact that climate decision making should be very participatory. It is not enough for us to sit in conference rooms and take decisions and talk about things when the people themselves are not ready to act, right? How many councils in Cameroon have climate change, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in their in the development. Let us say they have. How many because, let us say they have because they have so many documents that we should be asking why are they? No, no, no. I'm not sure they even have those they, documents. They, they yeah, should, you they cannot should. assume. Please give me a second. Yes, please. We cannot assume. Seconds, prof, prof has yes. Yes, we cannot assume. Do you know what? Tell us. A study that was published last year shows that 11 sub-Saharan African countries are spending five times the budget for adaptation, climate adaptation, than the budgets that are spending for health. Jesus. Okay? That is true. Cameroon is one of them. Just listen. Yes. <laughs> Cameroon is one of them. So it means Cameroon is paying already so much for climate change. Okay. okay? Thank you. But if we do that at the national level, and the communities, the communes or the councils are not taking that into consideration, we will continue to pay for climate change. Yes. Uh, but God I just hope too that my brother, this is how he poses when he goes over there in those conferences. That is uh, yeah. 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 a question. <laughs> talking about uh, communication here, I want to assure you that FACO division is the only division in Cameroon that has a, uh, the building code. Okay. Mm -hmm. We wrote it okay. and launched it uh, two, two years back and gave copies to the, the seven, uh, seven uh, uh, council, to the councils. That is in Buya, the type of building that you must build, you can build in Buya, the type that you must build in uh, Limbe with all specifications. We did that. They have the literature, but are they using that literature? They, could, they can take it and just put somewhere until the rains came like they came last time and did that uh, destruction. But I must hammer very strongly.